go. Hi, I'm Matt from Hummel. Uh, we've been talking about getting you some video about the two place. Um, so it's not done, obviously, but we're gonna show you where we're at and what we've done so far. So I'll get out of the frame here so you can see. There's the fuselage. Fuselage is pretty far. We've got our engine is uh, engine is all mounted up here on the custom mount. Um, it's got the this is aero momentum turbocharged engine, and I believe he said it dynoed around 160 horse. Um, it's rubber mounted, rubber isolated mounted like a regular airplane engine. Um, all metal fuselage. Um, fairly easy to build, kind of like every other Hummel. The side panels from here to here have rails, just like the Ultra Cruiser in the H5, but there's two rails and they go the bottom row goes back to this area and this top row goes all the way back to the tail to get picked up. So when you build this, you build this flat portion on a table, it's both sides flat, get all riveted, put together, then you can add on the rest of the fuselage. So you don't have to do any jigging or any fixtures either. So canopy's not done yet, obviously, but i uh, show you how it works if not look inside. So quite a large cockpit inside. You can see where the instrument panel is going to go. I have the blank out right now. We're working on getting that cut. Uh, your feet are down in that footwell down below where the pedals are going to be. And your, the wing um, pops into this wooden frame. We'll show you that again in a second. And the back seat person sits right about, right about in this area. So there's quite a lot of hidden room. So the front seat guy's up there. Back seat pilot's right about where this rear spar is going to be. And you've got a lot of storage space um, here in the back as well. Uh, we'll be testing it without the canopy, you know, for the first, all the tax, taxi flights and all the first flights. Um, this can also be built eventually probably with a sliding canopy. For now, we did this kind because we're used to doing this kind. Um, but we might do a sliding canopy. You can kind of see the structure. Pretty typical um, Hummel kind of structure, except... This has four Londrons that run all the way back uh, for support because this is a lot bigger, a lot bigger airplane. Um, this is sitting on this stand. This stand simulates how it mounts on the wing, rear spar, front spar. Um, so this is kind of like a, I guess, a model airplane used to put together. Um, a lot of North American products were put together this way too, where you set the. Uh, fuselage on top of the wing structure. So really, the pilot and co-pilot are really sitting on the wing. You're not really sitting in the airframe. You're sitting directly on the wing. Um, that's how this one's built. So, all metal, it's pretty pretty thick most places. <clears throat> Starts out at 040 skins and 032 in the front. And as we taper back, uh, we're in the 025 in the back. Um, the horizontal tail, vertical tail, are clicked in place, so they're not quite complete yet. Um, the rudder, you can kind of see in place, that's not the final rudder. Um, we have a second rudder that's a little bit more cord <coughs> that's underway, because uh, this one was just not quite enough. Mathematically, it wasn't quite enough. Um, the elevators are at the other shop uh, on the table, um, but they're quite, quite wide, and they come out with a uh, balance like that so I can counterbalance them for mass balance and the rudder will be mass balanced as well. Pretty typical Hummel construction except heavier duty. More ribs uh, for the speed and a thicker um, thicker sparks. Uh, the cone is basically four pieces of metal, flat metal, that wrap around. They're just basically kind of triangular pieces. Um, with the, the bulkhead. So they're fairly simple parts to make yourself by hand if you wanted to. Uh, most everything you're looking at here was cut, most everything was cut on our CNC machine, but not all of it. Some of the detail work uh, I did by hand. Then I'll go back and put it in CAD file form. Okay, so that's the fuselage. This is about the height the fuselage is going to sit at in its normal, um, normal height. So not too tall. Um, but not real close to the ground either, so we got a lot of, a lot of room. Here's the wing. 
sitting on its stand. Again, that stand is simulating how it mounts in the fuselage. It's a big wing. Um, it's all one piece. This is not an airplane that people are going to take apart every weekend and trailer to the airport. Uh, the idea is like a Mooney or anything else, you're going to pretty much put it together once and hopefully it stays together uh, forever. There are some definite benefits with a one-piece wing spar. Uh, there's nothing to inspect as far as attachment fittings. Um, you don't have any places you have to add extra doublers for bolts. So pretty typical looking construction except um, this airplane has um, extra stringers on the skins, top and bottom, you can see them mounted. The landing gear is mounted. This is a totally different landing gear system that I came up with. I hope it works well. It should. There's a rubber bushing at the top um, and everything pivots about that large bolt at the bottom. So um, this whole mechanism does a little pivot when you land and then this absorbs all the landing loads and gives you a little bit of cushion. Um, it eliminates all scissor links and all kinds of mechanism down below. Saves some time. Uh, these are uh, the flaps. They're not giant, um, but they're scaled just like your other airplanes that have flaps, except these are hinged underneath. Um, so up position, and you know, we can get quite a bit of down um, position, and it's an airfoil shape, right? So more like a Piper Cherokee or something, right? So we get good flap control. Um, rear spar is quite robust because the fuselage connects to the rear spar here and to the front. So, sets on, bolts on with eight bolts. And you can see the bottom skin's in, the front skin is generally in. I left the top skin off because we're still working on a few things. Um, and also I wanted to see what was inside. So, um, this is the final length of the wing plus one of our uh, angled wing tips like we do with Ultra Cruiser and H5. Give you an idea, the Ultra Cruiser and H5 are 9 and 7 16 tall. This is 11 and a half. So the whole airframe, or I should say the whole um, airfoil, is 23% bigger um, to, to carry you know, this big airplane and to keep the stall speed nice and low. Uh, math says the stall speed will be in the high 30s or low 40s, uh, which should be quite nice. Um, fuel tank is in. You can see I've got two long uh, fuel tanks in. Again, I'm trying to make this so it's uh, easy for a home builder, so we're not welding uh, anything if we can avoid it. Um, so, skin goes over with a door to fill the fuel, both sides. This is a fuel injected system, so there's a fuel return um, for the fuel as it circulates. There's a fuel return out to this tank. Both tanks are, are going to be plumbed together in the middle with a big cross tube um, so you can fill from either side but we're going to have one uh, one tank no selector um, less less complexity is always a good thing okay. skins are pretty thick on this wing uh, the spar actually only weighs about 68 pounds um, it's about an 8g spar um, all the calculations on this airplane so far have been double checked by a third party that is certified in um, doing the LSA um, certification. Um, so the spar has been checked, airframe has been checked, um, tail has been checked. Um, we're probably not going to do a sandbag test for our initial testing. <clears throat> I mean the wing is 8 G's, you know we're never going to pull anywhere near that. Um, after we fly the first, first airplane and get a little time on it, we will probably build a uh, test wing and do a full-scale sandbag test um, but with uh, a design that we know about I mean this is the same airfoil we know it's the same basic spar we know it's just stronger so we're, I don't really have any concerns about that you can see the landing gear sort of hanging down in the picture there we're using a standard landing gear I should say it axle wheels and brakes off a of, of Cessna right now uh, but you can use a Behringer or, or whatever you know, Black Max, whatever you want to use. Empty weight of the airplane, we estimate, is going to be about 800 pounds. And all the math is done for a gross weight of 1,800 pounds. 
so a thousand pounds useful load in a two-place airplane is a lot. So we don't anticipate we'll ever be anywhere near that. So our safety calculations are quite high. So you can see here's one of the flaps of the one. Um, pretty simple construction, doesn't weigh much, uh, but really, really strong. Um, the airflow shape, got the brackets. Um, so all the brackets have bronze bushings, so they should never ever wear out. Um, these are the top skins, are just off, so I can get in and do the rest of it. Pretty much all that's left in this particular case for the wing is uh, getting the ailerons in with the belt cranks and then closing it up with a few access panels. And the wing will be pretty much ready to go in the airplane. That's where we're at. Kind of wanted to show you the one of the ribs up close and personal. Um, this was all done, all these, all these bends and forms were done with rubber uh, on a little press kind of like a hydroform process and everything else was hand you know hand formed to finish and rather than press in dimples um, since this was a is a pretty uh, stout design I decided just to put gussets across on all of them, these stiffeners so all the ribs have stiffeners like this you can see them in the in the video there you are the uh, full full wing and even the rear spars have stiffeners um, and both both sides of the wing where you get in on the wing walk area, those have additional stiffeners on both sides. Um, since I really wasn't sure <laughs> what side you want, we wanted to use as the entrance side, uh, both sides have wing walks. It also makes the wing symmetrical. I think makes it a little easier to make. So that's where we're at at this point. It won't be too long, and we will have the wing closed up, mounted on the fuselage on its wheels, and it will probably do some engine runs. Um, once we get the radiator on that because that's a liquid cooled engine uh, we can also we can run that for a very short period of time without a propeller just to make sure everything's good um, with a fan blowing on the radiator or something so we can run it in the building here which will be safer than having the prop on it uh, prop is here it's a big four blade um, ground adjustable e-prop um, that they selected for me based on the speed that we anticipate uh, and the horsepower of the engine um, and this is turbocharged, so we should get 160 horse all the way up to, I believe their paperwork set up to 10,000 feet, uh, which we probably will never fly at, but we'll have it available um, to fly. So that's where we're at with the, the Rialta, the two place. Um, shouldn't be too much longer. I'm hoping to have this on the, on the wing and sitting on its wheels here before the snow flies here in Michigan. All right. Well, I know there's a couple questions that will come up. Yeah, what are the if questions? we can answer them yeah. now. What do you? What's the expected fuel capacity? Uh, there's 32 gallons. 32 gallons and um, cruise speed. You think estimate? Math says 140. 140. Okay. But we'll see. It's a pretty narrow fuselage, pretty streamlined fuselage. Wings pretty big cord, and it's pretty thick. Uh, we get 120 miles an hour in the H5. Uh, with 85 horse, um, maybe a little faster. So the math, based on the wing area and everything, says about 140. Uh, I think it might actually be a little faster than that. Uh, some people on the know that have designed more airplanes than me have looked at this and they feel like it might be a little quicker than that. Uh, I'm not going for speed. I'm looking for a comfortable cruise. But more importantly, I want a nice, slow, safe, stall speed to make landings nice and calm um, as well as being able to take this off on a grass strip somewhere and have a nice time uh, I, it's not all about speed it's about comfort and it's a very large fuselage um, when you're sitting in it it should feel like you're sitting in your f-150 the reason it should feel like that is i measured an f-150 i measured a ford ranger I measured the, my van, I measured two or three other cars uh, that we had around to get the height, sitting height, comfort height, and I copied that. That's why there's such a big um, footwell for the pilot and the co-pilot. So you're not um, sitting with your feet out like a go-kart. Uh, I find that very uncomfortable. I want to sit like you're sitting in a comf comfortable chair or you're sitting in a comfortable car. Um, so that's what we're after here. There's plenty of height. Um, you know, for the passengers. Again, this is the first canopy. We may end up with a form canopy later, uh, but this is a nice, simple cross-section, easy to build, 
no expensive tooling required. Um, we may end up with a tip canopy, we may end up with a bubble canopy, we may end up with a slide canopy, we don't know. But for now, we're going to go with this because this is what we know and we know it'll work. Okay. All right. Any other questions that have come in that you've seen? No, nothing glaring. Okay. And it will be tricycle gear, by the way. You probably figured that out. So the tricycle gear mounts under the engine. So this is a tricycle gear airplane. Uh, that's why it's going to be designed. It's probably got the strength for a tail dragger, but we're going to go tricycle gear. Um, it's much cheaper to ensure, easier to fly, easier to land. Okay, you can always shoot us questions yep. at sales at HummelAircraft.com. Yep. And if you haven't checked out our multi-cruiser video, that should be out shortly, if not already, by the time you view this uh, on our YouTube channel. All right.